Hey everyone, it's Heather with Tiller here, and today we're going to walk through some tips and best practices for using Tiller to organize your financial data for preparing your taxes. So when you're first getting started with Tiller, you'll notice that we pull in about 90 days worth of data. And if you're trying to file your taxes for all of last year, you may need to manually add some data to your Tiller um, transaction sheet. So if I open up this 2018 business taxes demo sheet that I've pulled in here um, for an account that I've recently set up, you'll notice that I only have transactions going back to November of 2018. So I'm going to need to pull the uh, rest of my 2018 data from my bank directly, either in a CSV format, which a lot of banks support downloading a comma delimited file, which is a CSV, uh, or you can a lot of times just copy and paste the data table directly from the transactions page from your bank. And so I'm not going to demo those steps. I've already pulled the CSV for my 2018 data for the account that is here in the demo um, sheet. And so the first step to getting your data ready to put into the transaction sheet is to do a little bit of cleanup in that CSV. So I have the CSV stored here on my computer. I'm just gonna drag it into my Google Drive here at drive.google.com. Once it's uploaded, I can click on it to open it in Google Sheets here at the top. And then essentially I just need to prepare the data in this CSV to match the column order of the transaction sheet in my Tiller spreadsheet. The first thing I'm going to do though is just figure out if there's an overlap in the data set. So it looks like the last transaction or the earliest transaction Tiller pulled for this account was on 11.1 from Ampersand Cafe in Seattle for 9.56. So then if I look at my CSV download, I can just double check. So it looks like it did pull this one as well as the other one here for 861. So what I'm gonna do is just clear out those transactions because I don't want um, to have any duplicates or overlap. So it looks like it started at the beginning of November. So I'll just go ahead and delete those rows two through four. So now I don't have to worry about overlap or checking in on what I need to copy over later. I know that this is the full data set that I need. So the next thing I like to do is just to create a kind of prep sheet here by clicking the plus sign in the lower left and then copy in the header row from my transaction sheet. So I'll go ahead and choose copy and then I'll go ahead and paste special values only. So this is just gonna help me um, make sure that I'm ordering my data correctly. So Next, I'll just pull over the data that I need for each of the columns based on that uh, prep sheet. So I'll go ahead and paste, and then I need the descriptions. So Control C is a shortcut to just copy. Control V is a shortcut to paste. I don't need this column or this column, but I do need the amount column. So I'll go ahead and pull that over into the prep sheet. Control C to copy, on mount, Control V to paste. Now I like to see the full thing here and know what I'm doing. So don't, I'm not worried about category yet. I'm also not going to worry about account, account number, ins or institution, but I am going to go ahead and fill in the month data. So I have this help article open here in my browser. You can find it by searching for how to manually add month data on our help center. I'm just gonna copy this array formula and this is just gonna auto populate the month data for me so that I don't have to worry about um, manually filling that in. So I paste that into row one here and then I just need to change the format of this to be a date and then it's giving me the months but it's giving me the wrong year because the formula is thinking that my date column is in column A. So just be sure to double check that it's different in some of our transaction sheets, so just double check. So I'll change these all to B because my date data is in column B, and then now I have my month data. So that is getting the data prepared. Now, when I want to get it into Tiller, I'll just need to copy this, the data set here as it appears. I'm just gonna start with the row numbers actually. So just make sure I get all the data for all the transactions. I'll choose copy and then best practice is to just um, do a paste special paste values only. I'm pasting this into my transaction sheet at the bottom of the list. 
When I do that, you can see that I get everything in the nice same formatting as it appears in the sheet when I do that values only. And I get my month data in there correctly. Now the last thing I need to do to just kind of clean all this up, since this is all the same account, it's really easy. I can just select this last line here and use this little blue square in the bottom right, which we call the quick fill square, and then drag it down and it just drags down all the data. And then I do see an error here. It's, it's wanting to um, increment my account number so I can just copy. I'll hold down shift to select all these and then I'll just paste and it corrects that account number. So just look for little things like that to make sure that uh, you get everything in there correctly. So looks like I have all my data cleaned up there. I'm not going to have the transaction ID, full description or any of that for these manually added transactions, but it is important that we have the month. That's useful for some steps later. Um, the week data, I believe there's a help article on that, but I'm not going to demo that in this. So now I have all my data prepared. So that's great. I've got my historical 2018 data. Now I'm ready to start doing the analysis. But how do I do that without having any of this categorized? The categorization piece is really important for your tax reporting because based on the categories that you're using, you might be able to itemize some things or if you're a freelance consultant or a small business, the, um, the categories are what kind of helps you determine what expenses you can write off uh, for your business um, to help with your, your tax situation. And we're not providing any specific advice on which categories are tax deductible or should be counted as business ex expenses, but that's something you can talk to a tax professional about. We're just demoing how the tool can help you organize the data. So to help out with the categorization, we have a tool called AutoCAT, which is an add-on to Google Sheets, and it makes categorizing your transactions, um, these historical transactions, as well as transactions going forward, a lot simpler. Let's show you how to install AutoCAT and show you how it works. So if I go to Tiller and then I go to Tools and I choose AutoCAT and click Create, it's going to prompt me to create a sheet here. So this is creating the AutoCAT sheet. And then I'll just acknowledge that it's been installed. So if I head over then to this uh, AutoCAT sheet, I'm just gonna go ahead and clear out these um, example transactions. And I have my, so for work reimbursable, anytime I go to a cafe, I can have that reimbursed if I'm there to work and I'm just kind of there to use the Wi-Fi. So if I go ahead and run this, then you can see that it's gonna pick up 20 transactions. So if I wanna to continue to build on this rule set, I would just kind of go through, mark my categories based on the way that I'm thinking about my uh, finances and which things might make sense for writing off on my taxes. And it, you don't have to, you can build a complete rule set to help you with categorizing all the time, but just for the ex purposes of this demo, if you wanna just, and getting your stuff prepared for tax time, if you wanna just focus on the tax related transactions, that's fine too. Um, so I've gone ahead and filled in some more rules based on my transactions. I didn't wanna demo all that because it takes a little time to just kind of dig through your um, transaction sheet. Um, one just tip related to that is you select all the data here in your transaction sheet using this um, gray square in the upper left and then turn the filter on here in the top. You can actually sort by the description column and this can help you highlight areas where you have recurring transactions. So I have this monthly maintenance fee for my uh, business account and you can see that some of them are formatted a little bit differently just based on maybe my manual entered transactions. Um, but this is just a great way to um, help you identify which transactions are recurring to help you build a rule set. So, and then if you do this, you can easily sort with newest on top again by choosing the sort Z to A on the date column. So that kind of resorts things for me. But I've gone ahead and built this rule set just based on my descriptions. And then when I choose run, it'll go through and it'll run all these rules against my uncategorized transactions. And it looks like it found 83 transactions. Um, so that's obviously not my full rule set, but it does give me a good sense for um, the recurring ones here. And then if I need to just kind of finalize this and clean it up and get everything organized 
in the transaction sheet, I can go into the filter option for my category column, clear all the categories and only choose blanks. And that will help me narrow down the list. So I could even go in and just to quickly demo, um, I can choose transportation and then anytime I use lift and then I know that Wi-Fi access commonly in this account specifically, since it's only one account being fed into the sheet, it's really easy, but in this account specifically, anytime Starbucks is in there, it's also just this Wi-Fi access because um, this account is only for business related use. So I'll go through and I'll run it again and then let's see how many more it catches here. So another 13 transactions were categorized and you can just kind of go through this flow, go through and then select all or clear and then choose blanks and then just kind of keep going through either adding new rules based on common um, places where you are going to have coffee and work if you're a freelance worker or just based on the data that you see here in the description until you get the list down. Like that's a pretty good list. It's down to, you know, how many, how many more are left here? Let's see, 41 are left. So that's pretty good. I can, and then even if I don't wanna add rules for all these, I can just go through really quickly and say like, this was Wi-Fi access, but it's super quick to just go down the list. I can start typing a category and it'll populate in for me. Now, once I've got those all organized and categorized, I feel good about the data set that I have here from the past year, I can actually start to do the analysis. And so it seems like quite a few steps, but it will actually go pretty quickly, especially if you use AutoCAD and some of those sorting uh, tricks that I showed you there. So now we're going to dive into the specific ways in which we can harness this data to actually provide analysis for uh, completing our tax return or handing that data over to our accountant. And so one of the quickest and easiest ways is to just create a pivot table for the entire year. Now we don't provide the year data the same way that we do the month and week data. So in order to get year data, similar to the way we have the month and week here, you would need to add a year column to your transaction sheet. So I had this help article open here. You can search for it, add year data to your tiller spreadsheet. There's another array formula here for getting the year data into the sheet. I'll go ahead and just add it uh, to the right of my week column. And then I'll go ahead and paste that into the header row here. And I like to just clean up the formatting so it looks consistent. Um, now you'll notice that this one is referencing the correct column. My dates are in column B, uh, but it's still giving me the incorrect year. So a trick we found with this is to just select the whole column, choose format, and then choose plain text, and it will just format it as plain text year 2019. And so now I have the year data. So what I can do with this is really quickly build a pivot table to show me all of my spending by category for the entire year of 2018. So I'll go ahead and select this, uh, this gray square here in the upper left that's selecting all my data. I'll choose data and then I'll choose pivot table. I'll choose category for the rows here. In the columns, I'll choose year. For the values, I'll choose amount and then we want the sum. And then I can go ahead and filter this out so that I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing the data for 20, 2018. So I can just set up the filter and then clear out 2019. And then I, now I'm just getting my um, sum for 2018 here. So this in and of itself is likely very sufficient for your accountant. Typically they just wanna see the, the total year's worth of data, the sum for each of your categories versus like your specific transaction details or it broken out by month. So that's one trick you can use to help analyze that categorized data. Another great thing we have, especially if you're itemizing deductions for your personal return um, or you have rental properties and you need to itemize things for your different uh, rental properties, or you like to be more specific with your reporting to your accountant for your business expenses, things like that, is to use the, um, some of the workflows that we have in the Tiller add-on specifically for taxes. So if we go into the add-on and we choose Tiller, other solutions, and choose tax tools, this will help us get going with this. And so 
you can go ahead and add the tag column to your category sheet. And this will allow you to tag specific categories as tax uh, for tax flagging. And so this can be tax deductible, like if you're itemizing deductions or just anything really that you want to call out in a specific detailed report that, that you need to give to your accountant that uh, should be included in your tax reporting. So in this example, let's just say that, you know, I, there's only a couple of them that I want to include um, in my tax uh, deduction report. So any of them that I want to include, I'll, choose, I'll type tax in the tags column. And then let's say that the other one is uh, this co-working space here. Let's say those are the only two that we want to include in this tax uh, reporting report, which is called the category roll-up report, which you can get to here from the tax tools sidebar. You can also get to it from Tiller, Other Solutions, category roll-up. Um, but this is just a quick way to get to it. So I'll go ahead and choose create. And then if I only want to see these uh, categories that are tagged as tax. I'll choose this option here, only categories tagged as tax. And then I'll say, I'll do a custom period because I want to do last year. So one and then 2018. And then I'll do 12, 31, 2018. And then I can go ahead and choose create report. And it's going to create this new tab for category roll-up report. And then it's showing me only tax-related transactions occurring between those dates. So you can see here it gives me the breakdown by expense and then your group, the um, specific category itself. And then it gives you the transaction descriptions here. And then it will it sums everything up for you. So all the expenses were this amount. And then it breaks it out by group for you. Um, and then specific category. So... If I didn't, you know, if I wanted to just run a full report, I could do that as well. Going here under category roll up. And then it's going to replace this report. So if you need, if this is the one you want to submit to your accountant, then you would probably want to go and download it as a PDF. Or you could even download it as an Excel file so that they can edit it if they need to make notes or just sum things up differently whatever makes sense for your situation, um, but you would wanna go ahead and just export that in some way before you run it again. And so in this case, if I then wanna go through and see the entire year and all of the data versus just the ones that I had tagged as tax, I can go and I'm not selecting that option. So when I create report, it's gonna give me the full report of all of my transaction data that's been categorized. Um, so then you can also export this and hand it to your accountant and then they can use that to help build your tax uh, return for last year. So those are the basics of some of the tips and so those are some of the best practices, tips and tricks for using Tiller to organize your data for preparing your tax return. Please reach out and support if you have any questions about how to use any of these tools or features, or if you have other questions about different ways you could organize your data for um, preparing your taxes. Happy tracking.